Hello everyone and welcome back to the Python Trading Bot series. In the last episode we researched our factor, our free cash flow yield factor in AlphaLens, found it had some alpha, so let's implement this in QuantConnect now and start back testing and looking towards live trading this strategy. If you haven't seen the previous videos, definitely go check them out now as we will be covering a lot of what I've covered in these previous videos. There'll be a link down in the description and a card towards the playlist. Right, so I'm here on the QuantConnect website. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is sign up for an account. Um, I've already got that though, so let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head into Algorithm Lab. Okay, so I definitely recommend doing their bootcamp projects. As you can see, I've done nearly all of them. Um, they really help with getting to know the QuantConnect system. And uh, they offer some pretty interesting strategies as well. You get to cover pairs trading, here you can see you get to do sentiment analysis, so it's a really nice boot camp to, uh, to get up to speed on the QuantConnect platform. Okay, so let's head back to our projects. So first thing that you're going to do is create a new algorithm. Now it's going to pop up with loads of uh, these little uh, modules on the side. I'll talk a bit about that later on, on what they are, but we'll ignore these for now. And this is what you'll end up when you click create algorithm. Now I've already created the first stage of our trading bot and we're going to go through how it all works. So here we have our main Python script and in this we're going to create a class which is our trading bot and you can see here it inherits from QC algorithm. This means that all of the different helper functions that are going to run are going to be inherited into our class. So the first thing that we do is we have our initialize function. So this is where we're going to set all the different settings, uh, for example, start dates for back tests, how much cash we're going to have, um, the, so the um, resolution of the data, so this means we're going to have minutely data, and then we define our models. And once we've defined our models, we then schedule our rebalancing. So there are two ways that you can make a trading bot in QuantConnect. You can go this route where we have custom models doing our different steps. So we have our universe selection, our alpha generation, our portfolio construction, then our execution. And then we have a rebalancing function, a, cu a, a custom rebalancing function that we schedule. Um, so here you can see this is the rebalance portfolio function we have here. Or QuantConnect has a really nice feature called the algorithm framework. Allows you to focus on a single part of the trading bot process. So you could uh, focus on the uh, alpha generation or you could focus on the universe selection. And it allows you to mix and match different modules. So those were the modules that we saw in the, uh, uh, on the first page when you uh, create an algorithm. You can mix and match those and they link in together uh, through the algorithm framework. In this series, we're not gonna use the algorithm framework, but it's definitely a great feature to check out. In fact, I've created this uh, same trading bot stage one in the algorithm framework and I'll link that in the description below to a, a, a post where you can clone this algorithm. Cool, so let's dive a bit deeper into this uh, initialize function, uh, specifically focusing on the models here. So as we mentioned in the first episode, the way that trading bots works is linking up these different models. So let's first start off with the universe selection model. As you can see here, I've got different files for all the different models in the trading bot. Okay, so we're now in the universe selection model. So the way that QuantConnect works, as you saw, there's minutely data. And so this minutely data gets passed through to select course. And so this first part is course data. So the course data contains only a few things to help speed up the process. And we're gonna be using it to filter the price and the volume. So you can see here, we've got our filter dollar price volume function. And here we just take uh, each security if the price is greater than one dollar and then we take the 1000 highest dollar volume stocks so we get some nice liquid securities there then those thousand stocks get given to the select fine function and we filter out the financials because free cash flow yield doesn't work too well with financials because of the way their balance sheet works and then we filter it based on the factor so first you can see here we filter out the financials and then we filter out by factor. So we sort it by our factor. 
And the way that you can find out how to get the specific data points for each factor is to have a look in the documentation. So let's load that up now. Cool, so once you're in the documentation, if you go down to data library and then fundamentals, you can see this is very similar to Quantopian in the, in the last episode. Okay, so they get their data from Morningstar and their data goes back to 1998. And as you can see, there are a bunch of res reference tables here. Um, if we just scroll down a bit more, you can just see it's got you know all the stuff on the income statement, balance sheet, etc. Um, and you can use this search function up here. So if we search up free cash flow, you can see that there's the free cash flow um, here, but then they've also got the cash return, which is free cash flow yield uh, already calculated for us. So if we click on that, you can see here we've got cash return and you can see it refers to the ratio of free cash flow to enterprise value. So that's exactly what we're, what we're using. There you go, free cash flow of enterprise value. Um, and you can see it is fine. So this is the fine data rather than coarse and then valuation ratio is cash return. So if we head back to our algorithm, you can see here we sort by cash return and we take the top 20 and the bottom 20. So here we have 40 stocks, the top 20 score and then the bottom 20 score for free cash flow yield. And then we'll give them scores in the alpha model. Cool. So this, um, so here we, we filtered our factor and then we set on the algorithm. So this main.py, this trading bot, we set a variable on there, our universe, which is the securities that we selected, those 40 securities. So let's head back to our main script. So here we see we set our universe model as our factor universe model, which we just saw. And then we add in our universe model functions, the course function and the find function. So that's how uh, the QuantConnect um, algorithm knows how to pass the data through. Cool, so moving on to the alpha model. So let's boot up the alpha model here. As you can see, we've got our alpha model class here. And what we do, we don't need to initialize anything on setup. All we want to do is generate the alpha scores. So we take in our securities, so that's that list of 40 securities, and we generate a pandas data frame, which contains the security symbol and the security um, free cash flow yield value itself. Um, and then we create an alpha score by normalizing this free cash flow yield um, value. So that's just to get uh, weightings in the portfolio. So when we normalize it, it will mean that the um, sum of the scores will equal one, one being our portfolio weight. And so this allows us to just take the alpha scores and translate that into a portfolio weight. So that's how the alpha model works. So it takes the securities and it boots out a data frame containing the um, individual factor values and the overall alpha score. So this alpha score may change if we introduce another factor, which we'll be going through into um, in a later episode. Cool, let's head back to the main script. So we've got our alpha model there, and then we can move on to our portfolio construction model. So just to quickly show you, so this is just setting up the this initializes just setting up the algorithm to work on that. And here you can see we actually schedule our rebalance portfolio function. So this universe selection runs whenever this data updates. But these um, three models here, our alpha model, our portfolio construction model, and our execution model, these are all run by our rebalance portfolio. So this means that we can choose when we rebalance. And you can see is that we take the um, we add in the uh, S&P 500 ETF here. We take it at daily resolution and therefore every day, which is a trading day for this ETF, for, for the S&P 500 ETF, which will be any, any trading day in the US. And at a time of one o'clock, we execute this rebalance portfolio function. So I just explained what happens uh, with the alpha model. So you can see we get our alpha DF out and then we pass that data frame into our portfolio construction. So let's head on to that now. 
Cool, so nothing to set up in the portfolio construction um, when we initialize the algorithm. But here we've got a couple of functions. So you can see the function that we call in when we uh, rebalance portfolio is generate optimal portfolio. Also, just a quick side note, here you can see that we've, um, if I just uncomment this, uh, you can log different messages. So this is just to keep track of if, if it, for example, um, errors out, you can have these logs in that you can see at what stage it's errored out. So here you can see we're saying we're generating the target portfolio. There we create a portfolio, we give the length and we say how many securities that we're, we're liquidating. Um, but I've just commented them out for now as there is a log limit. Um, so I didn't want to, to breach that. I only wanted to give it important messages as I've, I've, I've tested this works. Cool. So this generate optimal portfolio is the function that we call. We give it the alpha data frame. With this alpha data frame, we calculate our alpha portfolio. So this is our, our target portfolio. So you can see here, we create this portfolio series from the alpha scores. We name it to weight as that directly translates over. And then we take the absolute sum and we want the absolute sum to add up to one, uh, which it should already add up to. Um, if it doesn't though, then there, I have put in this if statement just to just to double check um, that is definitely scaled up to one. You can see we uh, we rescale it just in case. And then we return that portfolio. We then give that to this um, function here where we firstly add in our zero holdings. So you have in your portfolio, let's say we're a couple of weeks down the line, we have 40 securities in it, but we're generating alpha scores for a thousand stocks and then taking the top 20 and the bottom 20 and the top 20 and the bottom 20 combined may have changed constituents since the last rebalance and so we might have new stocks in and other stocks have come out so we have a mismatch between our portfolio and the securities that we're giving our alpha model well we potentially have a mismatch and we want to merge them in together and give a zero weight uh, in our portfolio to new stocks uh, selected by our universe and we want to give a zero alpha score to stocks that we have in our portfolio but aren't included in the latest. So that's what we do here, we, we add in our zero holdings. So you can see here we look in our portfolio values, we take, uh, so this is just a list comprehension here, we take each security and we ask if it's invested, that's just a, that's just a check to make sure it is um, uh, a security that we have holdings in and we also check if the symbol is not in portfolio index. So this portfolio series is the series that we calculated earlier in this function and this will contain the um, symbols for all the securities that um, were selected by the universe selection model. So that might not include some portfolio values and you can see here this is what we we take what's not been selected this time around and we want to liquidate that security, get it out of our portfolio. So we set the portfolio weight to zero. We then uh, hand this through to our optimize function, which currently doesn't do anything at the moment. Um, we'll be going through uh, optimizing our um, backtest with constraints in two episodes time. Um, so we'll get into that when we do and it's, uh, it's, it, it's fun stuff. Um, cool, so we've got that portfolio now. So just to recap, that portfolio is a panda series of symbols for the securities and the weights that we want it. And because we normalized our alpha scores, the alpha scores that we created are actually our weights in this instance, but that will change um, in the future when we introduce optimization. Cool, so we return that and then we return that back to our main script. So here we're in our rebalance portfolio function and we've got our portfolio here. So now we want to execute trades to come from our initial portfolio to that target portfolio. So here we move into our execution model. Cool, so there's nothing to initialize in this, um, no uh, parameters to set. Um, and we call this execute portfolio function. So we've got our securities that we want to liquidate. Uh, so just to, to recap, there are three ways that you can 
trade uh, in Quant Connect. You can either set your holdings. So this is what we're doing here. So this is a really nice function to use. It, it, it simplifies things a lot. Um, and it means that you can just say, well, I want X security to have you know, 0 0.2 weight in my, in my portfolio. Rather than having to calculate the trade from the um, optimal portfolio minus the initial portfolio and then submit a trade, you can just say set holdings, this security, this weight. So that's one of the options. The other option that you can do is you can, uh, this is specifically for setting holdings to zero, is to just give it a algorithm.liquidate. So that just sells whatever you have or, or returns to zero, whatever you have. Um, and then the last way that you can do it, the more manual process, is by using um, specific trades. So you can submit specific orders. So here we're making use of the set holdings and the liquidate helper functions. So we find out the securities that we want to liquidate by just doing a simple filter on our portfolio. So any portfolio where the weight, our target weight is zero, we um, create that liquidate securities. We then pass that through to this function here, where all we do is just loop through the securities and tell the algorithm to liquidate it. And so you can notice here, we've got a, a lot of the time we're passing, we're always passing the algorithm into all of the methods that we, that we use. You can see that in the alpha model, and portfolio construction, in the universe selection, in the execution. And this means that we can uh, trigger and use all of the algorithm parameters and functions um, that we have access to in from our trading bot class. So whenever we log something, we're doing algorithm.log. Whereas if we were doing this in, in the main script, we'd be doing self.log because that is that class. Um, so that's just a little thing that I wanted to uh, touch upon there. Cool, and then with the portfolio where we want holdings in it, we just take, do a filter again, and we say when it's not equal to zero. And then we loop through the portfolio, taking the security and the weight, and then set the holdings to the security and the weight. So as simple as that. Um, and so that pretty much covers it. So we've scheduled our function, this rebalance portfolio function. This will run every day, every trading day at one o'clock. It will run this rebalance portfolio. We'll take the current securities that we have. So you can see here, this is our list of securities, which is altered by the, um, uh, the functions in the universe selection model. And that's how the train bot will work. So every day it will just rebalance, go through the, go through the motions. And um, Quant Connect is really, really nice for backtesting. As you can see, it's just a simple backtest button. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll click backtest and we'll let that run. It'll take a while as it's rebalancing every single day. And in the next episode, we'll look at reviewing our backtest, adding some charts to delve a bit deeper into the details to find out why our portfolio performed how it did. Cool, so we've gone through how our trading bots is built, how it works, and now we can just go ahead, click backtest, and then I'll see you guys in the next episode. So as you can see, our backtest is starting to run. We started it in 2003. So I want to say thank you for watching the video. Um, make sure to subscribe and uh, turn on notifications if you like this content and you'd like to see the next episode when it comes out. As always, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn, leave a comment below, or tweet me on Twitter if you want to get in contact about any specific things or you'd like to suggest anything that I could uh, take a look at in a future video. So once again, thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.